Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking at the Algebra 1 EOC in the state of Texas, all questions from reporting category number two from the 2018 version. So the previous video, we looked at the 2017 version of the Algebra 1 EOC, all questions from reporting category number two. I gave you some calculator tips and strategies, and I'm not going to go over those again in this video. So if you want to review those, I'm going to put a little link in the upper right corner to that video. Um, those tips and strategies are, they take up about the first five or six minutes of that video, so you can rewatch that. So let's get started. Number three, which graph best represents a system of equations that has no solution? So again, a solution to a system of equations is the point at which the lines intersect. So a system of equations that has no solution would be a set of parallel lines. Parallel lines have the same slope. D is your answer. These two lines that are parallel will never intersect. Therefore, they have no solution. Moving on to number 12. A zookeeper recorded the feeding schedule for a baby rhinoceros for 20 weeks. The table and scatter plot shows the percentage of the baby rhinoceros's body mass that was used to determine the amount of food given at each feeding as a linear function of its age in weeks. What is the best prediction of the percentage of the baby rhinoceros's body mass that should be used to determine the amount of food given at each feeding when it is 25 weeks old? Okay, this is one of those problems where there's a lot of steps. So again, you might recall from the previous video, if you're given a table of values in your problem, plug it into stats. So age is going to be represent your x values. We're going to plug that into L1. Percentage of body mass, they're going to represent your y values. We're going to plug that into L2. So we're going to plug it into stats. That's our first step. So stat edit. Right, stat, enter, plug in all your values for L1, all your values for L2, make sure you have the same amount for each. Then we're going to perform a linear regression. So how do we do that? Stat, scroll over to calc, go down to linreg, linear regression, AX plus B, and when you do that, enter, 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 all the way until your equation shows up, you get negative 0.5448X, plus 19.803. So I get my equation, okay, after I perform my linear reg regression, I get my equation, and whenever we make a prediction, that regression equation is what I use to make my prediction. So now that we have an equation where we've solved for y, plug it into y1. Plug it into y1, and then look at your table of values. What is the best prediction of the percentage of body mass? Okay, we're looking for the y value uh, that should be used to determine the amount of food given at each feeding when it is 25 weeks old. That's age, that's the x value. So we're looking for when x is 25. When x is 25, y is 6.183, which is closest to 6%. So there's a lot of steps involved in that. You're given a table of values, plug it into stat, you get your regression equation, and then this best prediction, it's pretty much the whole reason we do these stats. We, we get this information and then we make predictions from this information. So number 16, the water level of a river was measured each day during a two-week period. The graph models the linear relationship between the water level of the river in feet and the number of days the water level was measured. Which statement best describes the y-intercept? Okay, that is right here. That's going to be h. Your y-intercept, the initial water level was 16 feet. Remember, that is your starting amount. Or, you know, in the equation y equals mx plus b, that's your b beginning value. Okay. 
your beginning value. So the initial water level was 16 feet, and then it rose from there. Moving on, number 19, which graph best represents the solution set of negative 4x is less than or equal to 6y minus 54. Okay, I'm going to write this down here, less than or equal to 6y minus 54. And then I'm going to do something and this may not be how you learned it, but I'm just going to do it the way I teach it, and then I'll tell you why I do. So one of the first things I look at is this symbol right here. You see that or equal to, less than or equal to, that line underneath? What is that going to tell you about the line on your graph? Is it going to be solid or dotted? It's going to be solid, which means I can absolutely cross off those two answer choices. So, you know, by crossing off these answer choices, we increase our chances of getting the answer right from 25% to 50%, so we have better odds. But what I'm going to do when I solve this is I'm going to solve for y, but I'm going to put that y on the left side. So the first thing I need to do is move this term. So I get negative 6y minus 4x is less than or equal to negative 54. Now I'm going to move my x term to the other side, plus 4x plus 4x. I always solve for y and put it on the right side of my equation, I mean the left side of my equation or inequality. So now, what do I need to do to get y all by itself? I need to divide every single thing by negative 6. Okay, so I just divided by a negative. What do I do to my sign? When I divide by a negative, like that negative 6, I flip my sign. And then I'm going to simplify this. 4 divided by negative 6, if you wanted to on your calculator, math, enter, enter. You get negative 2 over 3 times x. Negative 54 divided by negative 6 is positive 9. So what does this tell me? This is a solid line. Oh, what am I writing? Solid line and it's greater than if it's greater than we shade it above so your answer in this case is a i like to put a greater than up here and a less than down here that lets me know that from that line i shade above everything is up here okay but let's also make sure that we've graphed the line correctly so negative two-thirds x plus 9. D actually has the correct y-intercept, but it does not have the correct slope. So there are a lot of things wrong with D. It's shaded below, the, um, the slope is incorrect, but your answer is A. And again, if you struggle with what that line looks like, you can always take this inequality, plug it into y equals, and you can at least see what your line looks like. All right, moving right along. I'm trying to go faster than the 2017 version. I know that was an extremely long video. Number 21, the graph shows the linear relationship between the maximum area in square feet that can be painted and the number of gallons of paint used. Which of these best represents the rate of change? What do I want you to write above rate of change? Slope of the maximum area painted with respect to the number of gallons of paint used. Okay, what's your slope? Well, right here, you can always pick two points and do a linear regression. If you struggle with this, pick two points. Pick zero, zero. Pick one, four hundred. There you go. Zero, zero, one, four hundred. But please, please, please watch the scaling. How do we count? on our x-axis. This counts by halves. Be careful with that. This counts by halves. Make sure you're looking at that. How does your y-axis count? This counts by two hundreds. So be really careful about that. My slope is rise 400 over 1. 400 over 1 is C, 400 square feet per gallon. Number 25, which does not 
show causation. Remember, causation, there's a cause and an effect. So which of these does not create that? Your answer is D. When there is more protein in an athlete's diet, the athlete scores more points in a game. That does not show causation. One does not affect the other. This does not affect this. In all of these other answer choices, if you want to pause the video and read through those, you'll see that the what is written first causes what is written second. Let's move on. Number 27. A paper airplane was thrown from the top of a tall building. The height of the paper airplane above the ground can be found using the function y equals negative 1.5x plus 60, where x is the time in seconds the airplane has been in the air. How many seconds did it take the paper airplane to reach the ground? Okay, so let's see. There's a lot of stuff going on in this, okay? Well, first, our test-taking strategy, if you have no idea where to start, what should you do? If you see y equals, plug it into y equals. Okay, that's a good test-taking strategy. So plug it into y equals. So the paper airplane was thrown from the top of a tall building. X, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I don't really know where to start. What am I doing? That's where I start plugging this into y equals. Okay, what am I looking at here? Well, x is the time the seconds the air the time in seconds the airplane is in the air. Okay. So, this is the time in seconds. I'm just kind of labeling so we can figure out what to do together. Okay, so if that represents time, what does this y axis represent? Well, this is going to represent the height. And I'll write it like this. The height. So when I plug this into y equals, I can see that how it's graphed. And I want to know how many seconds, how many seconds? Are we looking for an x value or a y value? We're looking for an x value. Did it take the paper airplane to reach the ground? Okay, well, what would the height be when it hits the ground? The height's going to be zero. So now I'm looking for a height of zero or when y equals zero. So I've got it into y equals. How could I find that? Go to your table of values, second graph, go to when your x value, I'm sorry, your y value is zero and you're going to find that your x value is 40. Now what else could you do? Could you plug in zero for y and solve? Sure zero right there for y and then solve for x and you'll still get 40. So this is a grittable. It's going to look like this. There's your plus, there's your minus, and you're just going to put 40 just like that. Moving on to number 35 and I'm going to switch colors just because I want to. The graphs of linear functions f and g are shown on the grid. Which function is best represented by the graph of g? Okay, so let's look at this. This is a tough question. A lot of students really struggle with this kind of stuff because they don't understand what they're looking at. Okay, so g of x equals, all right, well, obviously f of x is in all of the equations that g of x equals. Okay, f of x in this case is what? My slope is 1 over 1, so it's just x, and my y-intercept is 0, okay? So that's the equation of f of x. Well, what do you notice about g? g of x, well, what's that? What's my slope for g of x? It still has a y-intercept of 0, and the slope is rise 1 and run 3, so it's 1 third x. So how do I write g of x in terms of f of x? Well, what was the difference? It's one third the slope, which means your answer is B. G of X is one third the slope of F of X. And remember, if F of X equals X, then anywhere I see F of X, what can I replace it with? X. So G of X equals one third times F of X. It's the same thing as G of X equals one third times X. This is a really difficult problem for a lot of Algebra 1 students. 
Number 42, the table shows the linear relationship between the balance of a student's savings account and the number of weeks he has been saving. Based on the table, what was the rate of change? What do I want you to write above that? Slope of the balance of the student's savings account in dollars and cents per week. Okay, so test taking strategy. When you see a table in your problem, what should you do? Plug it into stat. This will be X, this will be Y. So I'm going to plug in this into L1, this into L2. Plug it into stat and perform a linear regression. If you want to pause the video and do that now, that would be a great idea. Good for practice. Okay, so if you did that, you should have gotten your slope to be positive 7. So this is a gridable, which this is what your calculator will say if you did that, plus minus 7. Okay, and if you want to write a plus here, you absolutely can, and you can bubble it in as well. But you don't have to do that for plus. For positives, you do have to do that for negatives. Moving on to number 45. The graph of 2x minus 5y equals 10 is shown on the grid. Which ordered pair is in the solution set of 2x minus 5y is greater than or equal to 10? Okay, so this line is just this up here. The question is asking you about this inequality. So one of the things that you can do is this is a value for x and this is a value for y. You can plug in 0 for x and 5 for y and see if you get a true statement, meaning what's on this side, is it greater than or equal to? What's on this side? If it is, then that's your answer. So that's a good little test taking strategy. You can also solve for y and graph it. If you want to pause the video and do that now, that would be a great idea. So I'm going to go ahead and solve it for you. We're going to solve for y. I'm going to subtract 2x from each side, and I get negative 5y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 10. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 5. Everything gets divided by negative 5. Now, I'm dividing by a negative. What do I do to my sign? I flip it. Negative 2 divided by negative 5 is positive 2 fifths. Anytime you see anything like this, you can always just plug this into your calculator. Negative 2 divided by negative 5, math, enter, enter, and it'll say 2 fifths. Minus 2. So now I know this line is this right here, but my shading, where am I going to shade? I shade below, which is down here towards that less than. And that line should be solid, and it is. So you have to be careful because if there wasn't, like right here, if I took that away and it was just less than, that line should be dotted. Okay, so just be really careful. And your answer is B, 5, 0, right here. That's the only point that's listed that is on the line or in the shaded region. All right, moving right along. We are almost done. 51, what is the slope of the line that passes through the points? 5, negative 11 and negative 9, 17. What's your test taking strategy? When you're given two points, boom, stat edit, then stat, calc, linreg. If you are on the honors route, I would suggest plugging it into your slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Either way, it'll give you the same thing of negative 2. So moving right along, number 54. Which line appears to have an x-intercept of negative 5? Okay, here's my x-axis. And a y-intercept of 3. So an x-intercept of negative 5 and a y-intercept of positive 3. Well, which, which one of these has that? G, negative 5 on the x-axis, positive 3 on the y-axis. And that concludes your review for reporting category number 2 from the 2018 version of the Algebra 1 EOC. I hope it was helpful.